Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Obviously, some devastating news coming out for Texas A&M Sunday afternoon. Former five-star running back Ruben Owens expected to miss the remainder of the 2024 season with a lower body injury sustained in the scrimmage on Saturday afternoon. Obviously, this news sucks. There's no way around it. Want to have the conversation of where does Texas A&M kind of go from here in that running back room? Maybe some creative ways in terms of Texas A&M replacing the production that we expected that Ruben Owens would have in 2024, a guy that, you know, I'm really excited for still coming back in 2025, but a guy that I thought would have a massive year in 2024. The Texas A&M fans who've been rocking with the boys the last couple of weeks and months know that he was my pick to lead this team in rushing yards heading into 2024. I think not only a really good running back, but kind of fitting exactly what Colin Klein wants to do with this rushing attack, want to get into kind of a few other options that Texas A&M has, maybe get a little bit more creative in terms of who could be carrying the rock for Texas (laughs) A&M. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. I've been reading the message boards, a lot of different creative ideas that you guys were coming up with. And without further ado, let's talk first about you know, Le'Veon Moss. I would expect him to be that running back one heading into 2024 now. I think the good news for this Texas A&M program, I think Le'Veon Moss is a very capable running back. And you talk about the success Texas A&M was going to have with this rushing attack. I think it had less to do with the running backs and a lot more to do with the offensive line. So this rushing attack is really going to be fine if this offensive line puts it together in 2024. And again, we are believers in Adam Cushing kind of getting this offensive line back where it needs to be. But you look at the running back room, I would probably look at Le'Veon Moss, a guy that, I mean, averaged over five yards per carry running behind an offensive line last year that was about as leaky as it gets. Really good kind of of in-depth numbers as well. Forced over 20 missed tackles last year, had over three yards after contact per carry. Le'Veon Moss is one of those complete running backs. He can do a lot of different things at a high level, right? He can kind of be that bruising running back between the tackles, deals with contact really well, can make people miss in space. I would expect Le'Veon Moss to get a lot of work, especially early on for Texas A&M in the 2024 season. You obviously have Amari Daniels too, who a little bit more of a muscle hamster, right? At 5'8", 200 pounds, another really physical running back that we saw some really solid things of from Texas A&M in the 2023 season. We kind of expected it to be a three-headed monster for this Texas A&M rushing attack with Ruben Owens, Amari Daniels, and Le'Veon Moss. Now, I think what's really an exciting development for Texas A&M that kind of counteracts the news about Ruben Owens, you kind of listen to some reports coming out of the Saturday scrimmage. It sounded like former Stanford running back EJ Smith was the best running back on the football field for Texas A&M on Saturday. And I think that is Personally, really intriguing news. Now, the Texas A&M fans, we broke down EJ Smith when he committed to Texas A&M and kind of said this running back, one, we know he has the pedigree, right? Obviously being the son of one of the best running backs of all time. But I think more importantly, we've seen EJ Smith play some really good football at the collegiate level. You go back to the beginning of that 2022 season where he averaged almost seven yards per carry. We've seen EJ Smith play some really good football, obviously hasn't been able to stay healthy if you get a healthy EJ Smith who's holding on to the football and kind of doing the stuff he needs to do, I think this is a very capable running back in the SEC in 2024. Quite frankly, one of the higher upside players on this football team. Again, he's got to stay healthy, which he struggled to do over his career at Stanford. Coming into Texas A&M, I think a healthy EJ Smith, which certainly sounds like we got during the Saturday scrimmage, I think EJ Smith can be a lot more of a contributor than a lot of us expected a couple of months ago. And I think now, a couple of weeks till kickoff, EJ Smith's going to have to be a contributor for this Texas A&M running back room because, again, those three running backs are really the only running backs that have any sort of experience at the running back position. Now, I think the most fascinating conversation, I saw some people alluding to it on the message board. I think we should have it, and that is potentially Terry Bussey. The most fascinating conversation around Terry Bussey is just how are we going to get him involved specifically on the offensive side of the football? We know Terry Bussey is going to be an elite defensive back at some point in this career at Texas A&M. That being said, we have a really deep defensive back room for Texas A&M. So as a true freshman, 
are there different ways that you can get Terry Bussey involved on the offensive side of the football? When he committed to Texas A&M, the plan was for him to play defensive back. We all said the same thing. And that was, you got to find ways to get Terry Bussey the football on the offensive side. That doesn't mean he has to be a full-time starter, but you certainly have some packages and have some plays where you put it quite frankly, there's a good chance that Terry Bussey is the most electric player on this Texas A&M team, whether it was in special teams, whether it's on offense, you want to get the football into this kid's hands. And now with all of a sudden a very thin running back room, I wonder if you hear some buzz around Terry Bussey working in on the offensive side of the football, a couple of things that, you know, give me confidence that this could work. One, Terry Bussey's up to almost 200 pounds. I think that's a massive storyline because if you were to told me Terry Bussey's going to play running back, him coming out of his senior year, I would have just said he's not big enough to kind of endure that workload in the SEC. Him up to almost 200 pounds makes me feel better that he can kind of endure getting multiple carries per game for Texas A&M on the offensive side of the football. And then you just look at him purely as an athlete with the football in his hands. This is a kid that averaged over 10 yards per carry during his career at the high school level. Again, primarily at the quarterback position, he is used to running the football, ran for over 5,000 yards during his high school career with 98 rushing touchdowns. I mean, there is reason to believe that Terry Bussey, I think, can do that. If there's anybody that can do it, I think it's Terry Bussey. And then you look at Colin Klein and how he wants this rushing attack to look where there's a lot of concepts that are going to get the ball carriers out to the perimeter. That's exactly how you want Terry Bussey factoring into this running back room. That's going to be a really interesting storyline to follow. Again, he's a true freshman. I wouldn't expect him to get more than five carries per game during the 2024 season, but you talk about you know, maybe kind of replacing the production we thought Ruben Owens would have. I think Terry Bussey is a guy that certainly could do that job. Now, there's some other guys on this roster. I think Dalton Brooks was an elite running back coming out of high school. We kind of think Dalton Brooks is going to play a lot on defense. So I don't know if you want to monkey around with him playing running back, but Terry Bussey was a guy that, you know, probably wasn't going to play a ton on the defensive side of the football. It's primarily going to be a special teamer, I would have thought, heading into 2024. So I think there's reason to believe that maybe you can start working him in on the offensive side of the football. And maybe it doesn't all come together week one against Notre Dame, but maybe week five as you get into SEC play. That's where we see Terry Bussey maybe getting utilized in this Texas A&M backfield. You know, we'll see how this plays out for Mike Elko. Obviously, some really disappointing news. I'm a huge Ruben Owens fan. I cannot wait to see him back in 2025, but wanted to hop on and, you know, kind of talk about where I think Texas A&M can go in that running back room. Appreciate you guys checking it out. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.